Like I was telling Pete last night, can you imagine if when the speeches were done, like right now we'd be waiting in line to get on a bus and then we'd be on the bus for two hours going to our hotel that was out in the middle of nowhere and the bus driver would have been lost and you never get home till like one o'clock in the morning. You have to get back up at like 6 a.m. I was happy with my ice cream on the couch watching Michelle Obama. Oh my gosh. Did you guys watch that? It was incredible. Uh, I love her so much. She is such a beacon of hope and love. I'm pulling up Twitter because I asked you for questions today. I didn't do it on Instagram. I was, I was a mess today. Man, I did not. Uh, I did not um, plan very well. Okay. I miss your cooking videos. I know, Debbie. The problem is I don't, uh, I don't cook as much as I did when quarantine started. Plus, I feel like everything I cook isn't interesting. Um, but maybe I could make it interesting, I guess, but it's like, oh, look, another night of putting beef in the pan and making a meat sauce for pasta again. <laughs> um, yes, I see a lot of your comments about Michelle. She's, she's wonderful. It was, it, it was absolute fire. I, I, I love it. So, um... Thank you everyone for um, for taking time to, to chat about the book. Again, I'm so excited. Two weeks to go. Uh, Oprah Magazine uh, ran an article about the book today. Uh, they ran an excerpt from the book, very, very long excerpt. That, so if you want to read um, one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened to me in my entire life, you can go check that out. I, I shared it in my story. Uh, I also shared it uh, on Twitter, and then embedded in that, uh, oh, hi, Abby, uh, embedded in that story is a link to a uh, SoundCloud where you can listen to uh, those sections on the audiobook as well. Um, did any of you happen to read, <laughs> okay, based on some of the comments I can see that you have, uh, if you read the excerpt or listened uh, to the audio today, I, I would love to know um, what you thought uh, that, I felt like that section is just uniquely Justin and all of my, my awkwardness. Um, uh, hi Seton family. That is just like that story. I knew that story had to be told, even though it was, um, very embarrassing. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> would love to know your thoughts. So let's get to, all right. What shall we talk? Let's see some of the topics. And if you have questions or whatnot, um, did Pete let you pick up the suit? Uh, he did. He did. It was it was uh, really sweet for those of you who read the excerpt. Uh, and I was really embarrassed that um, I didn't have a suit and I couldn't afford one. And um, uh, that was the first suit I ever owned. And I definitely cannot fit into it anymore. So, oops. Not oops, whatever. That's who I am. Um... Okay, let's see. I have a question. You have had a lot of life experience, so I was wondering how do you narrow down what to include in the book and what to leave out, and is there anything you left out or included that you regret? Um, I mean, tons of things had to be cut from the book. Um, I think at one point we were cutting like 10,000 words, and it's very weird, right, to think... Um, like this is my life, and but but I'm 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 31, and uh, it it just feels weird to to write a memoir. But um, you know how do you summarize your life in 242 pages? So there was a lot of things that I I left out, and I guess the whole point of the book was just to feel conversational, like we're just chatting, um, and you know you're just getting to know me conversationally, and and therefore. You know, some of the things that I felt like didn't match the, the tone of the book or, or weren't quite necessary in terms of like, is this going to help the reader understand my life more? Um, and so those things, wait, I know you're 31. Yeah, it's, it's pretty weird, Ellen. Um, and then uh, there were some things about the campaign that uh, I just felt like weren't necessary to include. And I think the... Uh, the important part was to just sort of take the reader down the journey I was going through and not slip into punditry. So I cut out a lot of things that I felt like um, were more, it was just more commentary than, than, than was needed. So I have a feeling it'll be extremely millennial. Well, yeah, my life is pretty millennial. 
Dr. Jill Biden gave a testimony. I'm like, yes, she did. She, um, she's wonderful. And I uh, had really wonderful conversations with her about the book and throughout the campaign. Um, just a really, really sweet woman. I'm very excited for her to be first lady. All right. Who gave you the courage and determination to write your book? That's a, it was a lot of people. Um, and yeah, the, the dogs are very vocal today. Um, you know, I, I obviously was, when I was approached to write the book, I didn't believe I could. Um, I've got an agent who believed in me, um, a husband that believed in me, friends who believed in me, who uh, helped me figure out, you know, exactly what I was trying to say and find my voice. And I think that it always comes back to allyship and friendship, right? The people who you surround yourself with um, make sure that they love you for you and, and they push you uh, as well. I wouldn't be here if it, if it weren't for great friends who believed in me and loved me. Um, and, and especially Peter. I mean, he's a phenomenal writer. And uh, sometimes it, it, it was um, a little hard to, to say, you know, I want you to read this and I want you to, to truly give it the, um, the criticism that it deserves because I want this book to... To, to, to do well, um, not just like do good in sales, but I want it to do good. I want people to pick it up and read it, especially young people and feel less alone and seen and understood. And um, that that takes a lot of work. You can't just do that by yourself. All right, let's see what we got in here. We'll just do a random scroll. Judy says she can't wait for her copy to arrive. Thank you, Judy. Looking for a question. Oh my gosh, will there be a 2021 Buddy and Truman calendar, says Cassie. I would love that. Um, Evan asks about a book signing. So all of the um, events are now virtual, which makes uh, uh, ensures that all of us are safe and healthy. It's a little bit of a bummer that we can't be in person, but many of the bookstores, some of them have announced it, like Brain Layer here in South Bend. If you order the book through their store, you can go to bookshop.org and order the book. Um, you can get a signed book plate. So I'm signing these book plates are kind of just like stickers uh, with the name of the book on it. And I'll, I'll autograph that and you'll uh, get that with uh, your purchase. Uh, I think some other stores are doing that. Maybe they haven't announced it quite yet, but really trying to, to, to make an effort to, to send out a lot of book plates, a lot of signing, but um, really appreciate you taking an interest in that. So um, not all of the events have been announced, but uh, I know that'll be coming, especially in the next week or so. Um, but if you're looking for uh, a bookstore to support, go to bookshop.org, type in your zip code, you can find one in your community. Um, if you have no idea what bookshop to support, you don't have one in your community, check out The Brain Layer here in South Bend. Uh, it is a black female owned small business, uh, and we love Kathy over at The Brain Layer, and she would love to sell you a book. Um, but please check out bookshop.org uh, to find your local store to support. How was interacting with other political partners? Um, you know, it, it was it was fine. Like uh, Jill was very chatty and loving uh, and, and welcoming. She, she had been doing that for a long time. Um, Doug was super friendly uh, and warm and inviting. And it was sort of interesting because we had these conversations like we would sort of shut politics off because we wanted to check in with one another. Like, this is a crazy thing that we're all doing. And some people uh, were, um, you know, not interested in politics at all. We're just there to support the person that they that they loved and other people really wanted to get into the nitty gritty. Um, so uh, I just felt, but everyone was warm and kind. Like um, I, I sat next to Jane Sanders all the time and we joked about bringing candy and popcorn. Um, you know, everyone uh, wanted to, partner to do well. And I think part of that just comes with, you know, we're like dance mom territory. Like obviously we're there to, to support uh, the person that we love. But at, in the end of the day, you know, we're, we're all on the same team here. So that requires uh, some warmth and, and humility uh, as well. Let's see, a couple more and then we got a scoot. Pete has a very tight schedule today and we gotta make sure Buddy gets his walk in, so. More Truman content. You got it. Truman hates all of us. He has no time for any of us. So I'll keep asking. Steven, anybody get a signed book? Like I mentioned, uh, we'll be announcing that pretty soon. Um, different, uh, uh, different bookstores will be, will be offering signed book plates. Any word of advice to kids and teachers working online? Uh, I would say don't expect perfection. 
Uh, I'm really worried about teachers uh, measuring student progress based on participation. Um, like we shouldn't be, um, uh, you know, making kids feel any less than uh, if they're not interested in turning their camera on, if they're not, you know, dressed and sitting up at the table. Let's just remember, like, this is really hard for for everybody. Uh, it's hard for teachers. It's hard for students. It's hard for parents. Uh, this is going to be difficult for everyone, you know, and um, it's not going to be perfect. And I think that means uh, uh, some deep breaths and, um, you know, trying to trying to be on the same team here. We're all Everyone in education involved, the, the teachers and the parents were there because we care about our kids and we want to see them succeed. So just take a deep breath. All right, let's, let's see, oops, wrong button. Okay, maybe two more questions and then we gotta bounce. We gotta make sure Buddy gets his cardio in today. Um, again, if you, if, you just, if you just tuned in, um, we were really, really excited that Oprah Magazine uh, ran an excerpt today, uh, a really long excerpt of the book. There's also a link uh, to the audiobook in there as well of that excerpt, so you can listen to it, you can read it, um, and then once you read it, please, uh, please make some comments on Twitter. I'd love to, I'd love to know what you think. Uh, hopefully, you loved it, and if you hate it, just keep your comment to yourself. <laughs> uh, 108 degrees in LA. That's that's ridiculous. Did Oprah get her copy? I hope she got her copy. I mean, I know we're not best friends, but like, can we be? All right, will Pete be at the DNC? So uh, Pete is speaking Thursday evening uh, and, and very excited. He's speaking from here in South Bend. That's where we both are right now. Something you learned about life being on the trail. Thanks, Robert. Um, the whole third section of the book is a lot of lessons that I learned. Um, and I think I, I go through it in the book a bit, but I um, I was not very kind to myself throughout most of my um, most of my my life. Actually, I was pretty hard on myself, um, and my mental health uh, took a toll on the campaign trail. Those first couple of months when I was putting a lot of pressure on myself uh, to get it right, um, and felt like a lot of people were asking me to be different versions of myself, and you know what to wear and what to say and and, and everybody wanted me to, you know, just be a certain form of chastity, and, and it, it was kind of hard on me for a while. And then I, I just realized I got to be myself. I can't pretend to be anybody I'm not. And you know, uh, that was hard at first. But then I felt like the more I went out there, the more I shared, the more vulnerable I was, the more authentic conversations I was having, the better I felt about the work. Uh, and um, I think the more impact I had. So I, I learned a lot about myself, giving myself credit, um, and then also finding power in my own story. There's a, there's a lot of that in the book, um, how we can all contribute uh, to making people feel better about themselves and their stories. Um, and, and that took a, a lot of work. Um, and some of that work I just had to do on my own. And I had to let go of um, the fact that, you know, not everyone's going to like you. And uh, some people are going to, have opinions about you simply for who you're married to. And they're never gonna take the time to, to listen to you, uh, to believe you, um, to, to give you credit, uh, to be empathetic or sympathetic to your life story. Um, simply by existing, people won't like you. And I think that's a really hard lesson for people to learn, especially when, you know, when you're on social media and you see people saying really nasty things about you. But like, you know, I kind of had this, this rule, this, this separate rule of the road. It's just like when you see something nasty, the rule was like, okay, you hate me, moving on. You know, like you don't have to convince that person that you're, you know, a nice person or, or you know, politics separates you from your, your dignity and your worth. Uh, you know, there's just gonna be people who don't like you and, and you have to you have to deal with that, especially in politics. So there's a lot of stories about that and some anecdotes about that from the trail um, in the book. And I, and I hope that helps uh, more people sort of um, continue that journey of understanding as well. Yes, Twitter isn't real life, and I talk about that a lot in the book. <laughs> All right, one last question. First question I see, I'll take it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, there's like a question button. Oh my gosh. How did I, where have I been? Why didn't I get the pamphlet? Before, oh, let's do a rapid round. Okay, before you met Pete, were you politically active? No. How are Buddy and Truman? They're hungry and they want to go for a walk. 
nervous about people mentioned in the book reading it. I shared most of it with most people, um, protected some people's identity, and was really, really happy to share it with people who have shaped my life uh, for the better because I feel like it's a celebration of what they did for me and, and just in who they are. What's the photo on the wall of? Okay, we'll end there. Um, that is my grandfather who I never met. Um, unfortunately, he he drowned when my, my mom was 13. Um, he was in the Coast Guard and uh, that is him holding my mom on his knee. And uh, I found that photo uh, just in a box of old photos uh, at my parents' house and I took it into, um, I took him into this photo shop in, uh, in, in Traverse City, Michigan, and, the, and they touched it up. Um, and I have, I found that one. There's another really cool picture um, of my, my grandfather pulling in a dummy out of the water as the Coast Guard helicopter is hovering above the lake, um, which is really neat. Um, and then I wish I had it. I think I, I think I took it to Michigan. I'll have to talk about it sometime. Somebody remind me in the future. Um, it was like those three photos I found in the box. There's this amazing photo of my grandmother. Um, she's like leaning against the wall, smoking a cigarette. There's like a cross on the wall. And like all of her kids are eating breakfast in their high chairs. And she's just looking out the window. And, and it's just such a such an image. Um, you know, it, it just seems like she has so many things going on in her head as, you know, all of her kids are screaming. And my uncle's like right in front of the lens. And it's just such a beautiful... Uh, photo and so I had all of those photos touched up and, and framed them and I um, I really love looking at them and this one is very sweet and I definitely have my grandfather's hairline all right so um, thank you everyone I can't believe that next week when we talk it'll be one week uh, before before I have something to tell you hits the shelves I'm still nervous and excited um, but really really happy that uh, uh, that you'll have it in your hands. So thanks for taking the time. I hope you're doing well. I hope you tune into the uh, convention tonight, and I'll see you next week. Be well.